Skull by John Classen. One night, in the middle of the night, while everyone else was asleep, Otilla finally ran away. The Skull, a Tyrolean folktale. Part one, the forest, the dark, the house. Otilla ran and ran. She ran through trees and up hills. She ran for a long, long time. All through the night. Otilla had grown up in this forest, but after a while, the trees began to look different. They were getting closer together. Otilla kept running. As she ran, Otilla began to hear her name being called. She couldn't tell if it was someone's voice or the wind in her ears. Otilla! 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 Otilla suddenly tripped on a fallen branch and fell hard into the snow. She didn't get up. She could not run any more. She listened for her name, but now it was quiet. Otilla lay in the snow, in the dark and the quiet, and she cried. When she was done crying, she got up and began moving forward again. All at once, the trees stopped. She came out of the woods and into an open yard. In front of her, in the distance, was a very big, very old house. Otilla went up to the house. It looked abandoned, but when she tried to open the door, it was locked. She knocked loudly to see if anyone was inside, but nobody came to the door. Hello, she called out. Hello, someone answered. Otilla looked up to the where the voice had come from. In a window above the door, she saw a skull looking at her. Part two, the skull, the rooms, the dance. The skull moved himself a little so he could see better. Hello, he said again. Hello, said Attila. My name is Attila. I ran away and I need a place to hide and rest. The skull was quiet for a moment. Then he said, I will come down and let you in, but only if you promise to carry me once I do. I am just a skull, and rolling around is difficult for me. Otilla was quiet for a moment, and then she said, All right. The skull left the window. Otilla waited outside the door. She waited for a long time. It was very quiet. Then she heard some small scratching on the other side of the door. The latch turned, and the door cracked open against the snow. The skull pushed the door open wider. Thank you, said Otilla. You're welcome, said the skull. Otilla picked him up. She had never picked up a skull before. Come in, said the skull. I will show you the house. All right, said Otilla. They walked into the hall. It's a nice house, said Otilla. Yes, said the skull. I have always liked it here. Have you lived here for a long time, said the Otilla. Yes, said the skull. They went into a room. This is the fireplace room, said the skull. I come here to drink tea by the fire in the evenings. You can make tea, said Otilla. No, not anymore, said the skull. Can you make a fire, said Otilla. No, said the skull. They were quiet. 
Is that you in the picture? said Attila. It used to be, said the skull. They went into the garden room. Oh, I like this room, said Attila. This is my favorite room, said the skull. Can you eat the pears, said Attila. I can eat the ones that fall on the ground, but I can't reach the good ones on the branches, said the skull. I will get one for you, said Attila. She held a pear for him, and he took a bite. The bite of pear went through him and fell on the floor. Ah, delicious, said the skull. Thank you. They went into a room with masks hung on the walls. What are these masks for, said Attila. I used to collect them, said the skull. Can you wear them, said Attila. They're just for show, said the skull. You're not supposed to wear them. They went downstairs. What is this room, said Attila? This is the dungeon, said the skull. There's nobody in it now. What is this hole, said Attila? This is a bottomless pit, said the skull. Attila threw the core of her pear into the hole and listened. It did not make a sound. Do you want to see the tower, said the skull. All right, said Attila. They climbed the steps up the tower. Does anyone else know about this house, said Attila. No, said the skull. You are the first person to find it in a very long time. They got to the top and walked out into the balcony. You can see everything from here, said the skull. It's beautiful, said Attila. Careful, said the skull. The wall is not very high and is a long way down if you fall. They looked out over the forest. You said you ran away, said the skull. Yes, said Attila. You don't want them to find you. No, said Attila. I don't. The skull waited to see if she wanted to say any more, but she didn't. All right, said the skull. Then he said, there's a big room I haven't shown you. How big, said Otella. This is the biggest room I have ever seen, said Otella. This is the ballroom, said the skull. It was for dancing. There were lots of dances here. I went to a dance once, said Otella. But it was not in a room like this. I did like the dancing, though. I love dancing said the skull. Attila put her mask back on. She carried the skull to the middle of the ballroom. She held him to face her. Would you care to dance, sir? said Attila. Milady, said the skull. They danced and danced and danced until it got dark. Part three, the secret, the bedroom, the headless skeleton. When it was dark, Otilla made some tea in a fire in the fireplace room. Would you give me some tea, please, said the skull. Otilla took a teacup and poured the tea through the, his mouth and onto the chair. Ah, nice and warm, said the skull. Thank you. You can spend the night here if you want to, said the skull. I do want to, said Otella. There is something I should tell you, said the skull. Otella put her tea down. There is a skeleton that comes here to this house, said the skull. It is a headless skeleton. It walks around the halls looking for me. When it finds me, it chases me. Has it ever caught you, said Otella. No, said the skull quietly but I'm not as fast as I used to be. Otello looked closely at the skull. You don't want it to catch you. No, whispered the skull. I don't. Will it come tonight, said Otello. The skull looked at the fire. It comes every night, he said. Otello looked at the fire, too. All right, she said. She kept looking at the fire, and she started to think. When it was time to go to sleep, the skull showed Attila to a bedroom. 
was a nice room. There was a big comfortable bed and some pajamas for her to wear. Otella liked the pajamas. We should try to get some sleep, said the skull. The skeleton will come soon enough. Otilla blew out the light. They slept deeply and peacefully for a long time. The house was dark and very quiet, until in the middle of the night. A headless skeleton opened the bunt bedroom door. From somewhere in the skeleton's chest came a voice, but it only shouted one thing. Give me that skull. I want that skull. The skeleton ran into the room. It was faster than Attila had expected. She had just enough time to grab the skull before it reached him. The skeleton pulled at the skull, trying to get him away from her, but Attila held on tight. She did not let go. Finally, she got the skull free. She slipped past the skeleton and ran for the door. Give me that skull. I want that skull. Give me the skull. I want that skull. Give it to me. Give me that skull. I want that. They watched the skeleton fall into the dark until they heard it land. The sound of bones hitting the ground. They listened some more but they did not hear anything after that. All right, said Attila. Time for bed. Attila carried the skull quietly back to the bedroom. She put him on the pillow and tucked him under the blanket. Then she put on her coat. Aren't you going to sleep too, said the skull. In a little while, said Attila, patting the skull gently. I'll be back soon. She blew out the light and closed the bedroom door. Part four, the bones, the fire, the pit. Otilla went to the kitchen and found a bucket, a kettle with tea, leaves, a teacup, and a rolling pin. Then she went out into the night and climbed down slowly and carefully to where the skeleton had fallen. When she got to the bottom, she found the skeleton's bones and scattered, scattered everywhere. She gathered them into the bucket. She found every single one. Otilla carried the bucket of bones to a rock. She took a bone out of the bucket and put it on the rock. Then she took out the rolling pin, held it over her head, and smashed the bone. She smashed it over and over into smaller and smaller pieces until the pieces were as small as they could get. Then she took out another bone and she did it again, and she did it to all of them. Then Otilla made a fire. She made it huge and hot. She melted some snow in the kettle with the, the tea leaves and made tea over the fire. Then she took the bone pieces and threw them into the flames. She poured her tea into the tea teacup and drank it as she watched the pieces burn to ash. When the fire was over, she gathered the ashes in, into the bucket and carried it back up the hill. Back to the house. She went down to the dungeon and dropped the whole bucket into the bottomless pit. She watched it fall into the dark and listened. It did not make a sound. Then she climbed back upstairs and went to bed. Part 5. Breakfast. In the morning, Otilla and the Skull had breakfast. Otilla made tea and picked some pears from the branches. I'm sorry last night was so frightening, said the skull. Otilla smiled and patted the skull. It's over now, she said. Thank you for helping me, said the skull. You're welcome, said Otilla. I wonder if the skeleton will ever come back, said the skull. Otilla cut a piece of pear. It won't, she said. The skull looked out the window. It's a nice day outside, he said. Do you want to go for a walk? 
they went for a walk. It was a nice day outside. Attila stopped and gave the skull a bite of pear. It went through him and fell onto the sled. Thank you, said the skull. He took another bite. You know, he said, chewing the pear, you could stay here with me if you want. Do you want me to stay, said Attila? Yes, said the skull. I do. All right, said Attila. The 